Back when this channel took off in 2021, one of the earliest discussion videos I made was on untargetability, a gameplay element many of you are likely aware of in light of all the frustration that comes from it. I think what's interesting about untargetability is that it's frequently confused with invincibility. Understandably so, they share the same general implication. Not to mention the latter status effect, impactful as it may be, doesn't get explored that much in contrast to the former. Invincibility, or invulnerability, whichever term you prefer, is a very common mechanic in games of all genres. The ability to render yourself impervious to any hostile effects for a sustained or ephemeral period of time can imply many things, whether it's protect in Pokemon, immunity from destruction by battle and card effects in Yu-Gi-Oh!, the Superstar in the original Super Mario Bros. Exempting the player from negative consequences can serve different purposes whether a fun little easter egg or gimmick for more casual games or strategical tools used to acquire a more tactical advantage. Obviously being a player vs player game, invincibility carries no small amount of influence on a champion special level in League. It also happens to be one of the worst mechanics for this kind of title. Today we'll discuss invulnerability in League of Legends and why no champion should be allowed to have it, at least in my humble opinion. By the way, for those of you who don't make it to the end of the video, there will be a straw poll in the description for you to check out, so please do so even if you get bored and stop watching midway through. Due to how significantly invulnerability can affect the outcome of a fight, developers go to great lengths to minimize how much of a net advantage you can acquire from it, as unrestrained access and or use of such a buff would inevitably kill all semblance of challenge or difficulty, which isn't conducive to a fulfilling and more importantly fair gameplay experience. You can see this present with an untargeted ability as well. Having the option to avoid almost all hostile interactions is so impactful they have to add a mountain of restrictions to prevent it from being too overpowered. Even then, one could argue that untargetability at its core is too effective, and the same goes true for invincibility, possibly even more so. Let's quickly establish the differences between the two. Untargetability refers to units in a state where there are no longer valid targets for anything that requires a selectable entity. For all intents and purposes, it would be the same as the unit phasing out of existence. Subsequent effects aimed at the untargetable unit, whether positive or negative, do not affect the champion in question since it's as if they don't exist. While being untargetable renders enemies unable to exert any pressure on you at all, it technically also means allies cannot do the same. Elisin can't safeguard onto you while you're untargetable, nor can Sona's healing aura and, I believe, area-based effects like Melio's cozy campfire too. While any effects applied after entering the state are completely ignored, anything that was applied prior to activation still holds, which is a key distinction to make between untargetable and invulnerable. You can still take damage. Any attachment-based effects like damage over time or tethers will still apply onto untargetable units, and the same is true for any debuff-related pressure. So his bubble will still cause you to fall asleep, Seth's death mark will still explode on you, Vladimir ultimate will detonate, etc. Hence why they always say to use your untargetability to avoid having the status effect applied to you in the first place. In spite of that, the pros of untargetability unequivocally outweigh the cons. In theory, it's not quite the same as total immunity, but it comes damn near close. You can use it to evade the vast majority of hostile effects in the game when timed correctly, owing to why players get so aggravated when dealing with the likes of Fizz, Vladimir, and Zed, especially considering untargetability's an instant cast. Invulnerability behaves very much the same way, but there are nuances between the two that make it better or worse depending on the application. For one, invulnerable units can still be interacted with and targeted by effects, except all damage is reduced to zero, including true damage. This means anything that requires damage to be applied is completely negated. For example, Lifesteal doesn't work because it restores health based on damage dealt, but anything with a proc based effect such as Thornmail will still reflect damage as the only condition to activate the recoil effect is for on-hit effects to be applied to someone. And they technically are, except damage is reduced to zero. The main downside of invulnerability is that other hostile effects like debuffs and crowd control still apply to the target in question, and any form of damage that persists like damage over time will continue to harm the target if the duration of its effect outlasts the invulnerability period. Some exceptions apply on a case-by-case -case basis. Darius's hemorrhage, for example, does not apply bleed stacks to invulnerable targets. Typically, however, the most common way to deal with an invincible enemy is to crowd control them for as long as possible to stall out that period. You might assume with the aforementioned susceptibility to lockdown that invincibility is weaker than untargetability, but there's a caveat I haven't mentioned yet. Apart from the extremely short duration in which a champion is allowed to be made intangible, the main power limiter for those types of abilities is that while enemies cannot do anything against the caster, the caster can't do anything as well outside of their ability's own effects. While casting Playful Trickster, Fizz cannot use any of his other abilities, and must wait until after reappearing. While Kane's a humble trespass, he cannot do anything until after emerging back out. During Alpha Strike, apart from the damage the ability itself can deal, 
Master Yi has to wait for the animation to complete before any further action can be taken. This universal restriction is placed on abilities that grant a target ability as a means of preventing players from garnering too insurmountable of a combat advantage against their opponent, since obviously there's nothing you can do against a champion who can't be targeted, and is a driving force behind why Gwen has the reputation that she does, being the only champion with untarget ability who is free to act as she pleases. Though in her defense, the opponent can cancel her intangibility by entering her friend zone. Invulnerability, on the other hand, doesn't have this limitation, at least not prevalent enough to be considered universal. Invincible champions are still mostly free to do as they please. Not everyone, but a large number of them can. If nothing else, they're at least free to move around as they please, whereas many untargetability effects have fixed movement or sometimes no movement at all. Barring the initial cast animation of Divine Judgment, Kale's free to attack, move around, and cast abilities with impunity for 2 seconds after. Trindamir's Undying Rage allows him to do the same, Kindred Slime's Respite, Shintal's Crescent Guard, and Tyrek's Cosmic Radiance as well. Pantheon's Aegis Assault does not let him do anything during the animation, but that's perfectly reasonable as it's a basic ability whereas the others are ultimates. There are two more things that make invulnerability stand out as well. While it's true that negative effects like debuffs and crowd control are not prevented by this mechanic, that can be used to your advantage as you can intentionally withstand the brunt of all that pressure, so your teammates don't have to. More times than I'd like to count, I've seen a fist dodge incoming fire using Playful Trickster, causing that same attack to then damage a teammate standing behind him instead. In contrast, like I said, an invulnerable champion can intentionally tank a Lucian Calling, Jinx Rocket, or J Shock Blast to their team. This technically isn't a demonstration of invulnerability, but those of you who were around during TSM's dominance in the LCS back in 2016 may remember the iconic moment where Biofrost protected double lift in the nick of time against Impact. You can very easily do the same by using an invincible champion as a human shield. Notably, some invulnerability spells can also be used on other targets, whereas not a single untarget ability skill can do the same. Kindred, Tarek, and Kale can also apply their ultimates to members other than themselves, allowing for significantly more impact in a fight owing to why many abilities that give invincibility are considered infinite value ones. So having gone through a rather comprehensive assessment of the differences between the two, we should probably address the title of this video. Why do I think invincibility is conceptually bad for League? The same reason invincibility is bad for any competitive environment. It gives one player too overwhelming an advantage with no way for the opposition to emerge from it in a beneficial way, forcing them to take the only measure that can produce a net neutral outcome, not interact with the invulnerable champion. What can you do against an invincible opponent? Nothing. All you can do is wait for them to not be invincible and then attack afterwards. Granted, the same does apply to untarget ability, but once more, it's kept in check by the untargetable champion being unable to do anything in return as well, making it more of a stall tactic than something conducive to their offensive pressure. League of Legends is a game of very limited options in relation to other titles. There's not much you can do to capitalize on your opponent being invincible. For comparison's sake, using other genres, in competitive turn-based games like Pokemon, if you predict your opponent will use Protect, you can take that turn to set up yourself. Call mine, Zord Stance, Agility, whatever you want, or you can use that turn to get a free switch into a more favorable matchup. In this scenario, despite your opponent being safely protected for that turn, they came out of that turn in a worse situation than when it started. In a fighting game like Smash Bros, characters have a multitude of ways in how they respond to enemy pressure, from evasive maneuvers like rolls, air and spot dodges, to using their own mobility to run or jump around their target, or hunkering down behind shield. One moment you can relentlessly charge after your opponent, the next you can run away and make yourself as difficult to attack as possible. League doesn't afford you the same creative latitude when dealing with an invincible opponent. In some cases, you may not have any agency at all. When a Trinimir is chasing after you and pops his ultimate, for 5 seconds you have to do everything in your limited power to stay alive so you can finish him off when it wears off. But what can most champions do after they exhaust their abilities? Not much, unless of course you have ridiculously low cooldowns. Meanwhile, Trinimir is fighting you at full power, smacking you to pieces. All you can do in that situation is run. Even if you're a beefy opponent who can withstand 5 seconds of attacks, it's still in your best interest to minimize the amount of interactions because there's nothing you can do against Trinimir during that time. You stand to gain nothing and stand to lose everything. To clarify, this is assuming the invincible enemy champions actively try to fight you. If they're trying to run away, then by all means don't let up on your pursuit. Unlike turn-based games where there's an opportunity cost you have to pay to use moves like Protect, since it means you can't use a different move, a champion in League could use the full force of their pressure while simultaneously benefiting from total immunity to damage. And unlike fighting games where you can switch between aggressive offense to reactive defense at the drop of a dime, the vast majority of League's roster can't just do that. They can only use their abilities offensively or defensively in a given rotation, with a measurable number of cast members not even having the option to retreat altogether. Even if they did, the best thing you can do is stall them out. I suppose you can interpret the need to stall them out as a test of skill expression with one's evasion, but that only applies to a marginal fraction of the roster with enough mobility to do so, like Zed, Talon, and LeBlanc. Besides, you can't dodge auto attacks in the first place. 
Realistically, the safest bet is to stun them and then try to one-shot them before they can use that ability. In totality, the first major reason why invincibility is bad for the game is that unlike other games where becoming invulnerable usually means while opponents can't do anything to hurt you, you can't hurt them either. In League, invulnerable champions can hurt you, making opponents feel completely helpless in dealing with the situation because they are helpless. The sheer disparity in agency is ultimately what results in these abilities drawing a lot more of their respective champions' power budgets to them. While untargetable abilities feel like they're the most broken thing in existence, there are enough constraints on them to where the champion can still have more than enough power budget left for well thought out kits. The same can't be said for invincibility. For champions like Pantheon, he's allowed to have Aegis Assault while still feeling like a regular champion overall due to how many restrictions are placed on it to keep it balanced, including that it only gives invincibility from a certain direction and he has to wait until it's done before he can do anything else. Despite that, they still have to nerf it. Back then, the Empowered version gave you 2.5 seconds of invincibility, but now it's capped at 1.5 whether base or empowered and can't block tower shots anymore. In the case of everyone else, their ability to make themselves and or teammates immune to all damage has caused them to have very stunted gameplay. Kale's massive kill pressure late game is offset by having one of the worst early games to ever exist. Tarek's potentially teamfight shattering ultimate comes at the expense of his basic abilities and overall gameplay. Trendemir's 5 second death immunity is only permitted because he's an outdated mess of a champion. Without Lamb's respite, Kindra's basic abilities make them rather unremarkable. One of the reasons they have such carry potential is that their ultimate can shield them from getting one-shotted, where they can then shred their opponent's health bar and then create a dual scenario where whoever can take out the other's remaining health faster wins. On equal ground, unless Kindred has a dozen marks, they're definitively weaker than Graves, Kai'Sa, Draven, etc. in terms of what they can do. In addition, prior to Pantheon's rework, all invincibility spells were strictly reserved for ultimates, and I'll remind you they had to add a mountain of stipulations to Aegis Assault for it to be allowed as a basic ability. Furthermore, Kale, Tarek, and Kindred's ultimates have massive cooldowns, easily some of the longest in the game, with two of them having cooldowns reaching 3 minutes. It makes perfect sense why, you literally cannot do anything to them while they're invincible. All you can do is chain CC them or kite them out until they're done. Trying to kite out a Kale or Kindred is quite challenging though in light of them being ranged. I'm aware that none of these champions are particularly all that impressive in the meta despite having such a privilege, but I also believe that's what's holding these champions back to some extent. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't think invincibility should exist at all. I would much rather they take out Kale, Trinomir, Kindred, Xinjiao, Pantheon's invulnerable abilities, and reinvest that power budget into more things. Since Pantheon's one of my favorite champions, I would be more than happy to give up his immunity and do some of the following changes. Not all of them, just here's some ideas. 1. Allow Pantheon to cast Q during Aegis Assault. 2. Have a so as he can intercept projectiles the same way Brahms Unbreakable can. And 3. Instead of invincibility, have it reduce damage taken, for the sake of argument let's say 50%, and then increase the shield bash damage at the end based on the amount of damage mitigated, as sort of like a counter ability. To repeat, I'm not saying we should add all of these, it's just, just an idea. Not that I don't appreciate the satisfaction of completely negating a Garen, Darius, or Trogoth ultimate, but I'm not going to play double standard and let some champions keep their invincibility while saying others need to lose theirs. The only kind of invincibility that should exist in League is the one where the caster cannot do anything while invincible. Like Stasis, I know everyone hates Zhonya's for completely halting enemy momentum against you, but objectively speaking, Stasis is a very fair effect. You're stuck in place, enemies have 2.5 seconds to get ready for you when you're about to reappear, and while yes, you can hold out for your cooldowns to finish, so can they. If we have to keep invincibility in the game, then I think they need to add more restrictions to it, such as not protecting you from tower damage, so people can't just flippantly tower dive you without a care in the world. Either that, or make invincibility really brief, like 1.5 seconds at most. 2.5, 3, 5 seconds, that's simply just too long, especially considering you're allowed to attack and stuff while immune. What do you guys think? Between untarget ability and invulnerability, which one is more egregious to deal with for you? Be sure to leave your vote in the straw poll. For now though, if you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe would be much appreciated. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at varsverm, join my Discord server, and check out my other mechanics discussions if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.